This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're reviewing another pen display. Well, I'm reviewing it, you're watching, I know. So this is the XP Pen Artist 16 Pro model. So you probably have heard of XP Pen if you're into these pen displays uh, that are the more affordable alternatives to Wacom Cintiqs. And this is the first time we've reviewed them. I've reviewed Huey on, I've reviewed UG, and well, XP Pen has a new model they wanted me to check out here. And this Pro model, there's already an Artist 16, the Pro has higher color gamut. They claim up to 92% Adobe RGB, obviously full sRGB coverage then. So that sets apart from the others where typically you see about 75% Adobe RGB for these pen displays. Anything other than Wacom Cintiqs, they are higher, the current generation of Wacom Cintiqs, and much more expensive too. So. There you go. Also, your, your average $1,000 and up laptop will have that same 75% of Adobe RGB, so almost $500-ish desktop monitors. So to see something with 92% uh, more color saturation is pretty exciting, especially for graphic artists, especially those who are working for print and you need higher color gamut. How good is it? We're going to find out now. All right, so this is a pen display. So that means this unit right over here, not this lovely 2018 15-inch LG Gram. So the pen display, it works just like a monitor does. You have to plug it into a computer. Pen displays are available in a variety of sizes, from 13-inch all the way up to 32-inch, especially for the new Wacom Cintiq Pro models that come in really huge sizes. Typically for the, the Chinese, and in this case of XP Pen Japanese brands, the, the more affordable options, they go anywhere from 13 inch inch up to usually about 19 inch in size. So this one they call the Artist 16 and it's a 15.6 inch display. So it's the same size as if you got a pen enabled 15.6 inch Windows convertible but obviously it's going to be a lot less expensive and you can use it with whatever computer you already own. That's the benefit. Also for you Mac users out there it has both Mac and Windows drivers so obviously there is no Mac with a built-in pen display is there. You're always going to have to look for some alternative for those of you who use Macs for art and I know there's still a lot of you out there. There are drivers, like I said, for both Mac and Windows, and we'll take a look at it. It's pretty intuitive. It's not so different from a lot of the competing software out there in terms of how you set it up. And they update it reasonably frequently, and that's usually a good sign. That means a well-supported product. They fix bugs. They add some new features. They fix things when new OSs come out, all that sort of thing. So that part's good. This is a UC Logic digitizer. For those of you who follow those things, you know, there's Wacom EMR, like on Cintiqs, and then there's Entrig on Surface products, and then there's Wacom AES on a variety of Windows tablet PCs. So uh, most of these kind of, again, more affordable ones that you're going to find for sale on Amazon use a UC Logic digitizer. It's electromagnetic, electromagnetic, but the power is provided by the pen. There's a small amount of trace power that's used by these pen technologies rather than the display. So that means that you recharge the pen every so often. Now it takes months typically before you have to, but it's got a teeny little barrel pin connector over here, so it comes with a little USB charger, you plug it in, charges pretty quickly because let's face it, there's a TD battery inside of here. They give you two pens in the box, they give you even two charging cables, so chances are you're never going to run out of juice. You could use it while you're charging it too, but you don't have to plug it in. I know I've seen one or two people who actually think they have to plug in the little USB cable. No, you don't have to. Anyway, 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity. What does that mean? More than probably any of us can detect when drawing. I find that anything from 4,000 up is good. It's really hard to tell the difference, but I'll never complain about having more of them. Uh, parallax is an issue here, as is typical for most of these kinds of pen displays in this price range. Parallax means that where you put your pen on the glass, where you see it touching, it might be represented a little to one side or the other. Now, you can calibrate it to try to reduce that as much as possible, but there's always going to be a little bit, in part because the glass is kind of high up from the display layer, so there's just an air gap there, and that's what's doing that. And the edges get a little less exact, but not that bad. I was still able to use Photoshop menus and all that sort of thing. In terms of responsiveness of the pen, it's really very good. They report 5,080 lines per inch for pen resolution. That's pretty good stuff, and 266 reports per second. So it's not laggy at all. It's very fluid. Really, the, the fluidity of it's going to depend more on the processing power of the computer you're using it with. It's, it's good stuff there. The pressure curves are excellent on this. Now, with some of these more affordable pen displays, I haven't been in love with the pressure curves. They seem to be kind of good up to a certain halfway through the pressure curve, and then they get a little weird. This is just good all the way through. And it's the first one where I 
I felt maybe it was actually a little too sensitive. I had to turn down the initial activation force response because just the lightest touch would register on the screen. So that part's good, and I kind of offsets the parallax, which is a little bit of a bummer there because I really like a responsive pen where I don't have to press very hard for something to happen. The pen itself is your typical sort of Wacom clone here. It looks just like all the other ones, the UG, the Huion, and all that sort of thing. It's a little torpedo-y barrel pin. It's got a nice soft touch cover over here, so it feels good in the hand. It's fairly light. It's ergonomic. You've got two button clickers over here. There is no eraser on the back end. And then they give you this nice little holder over here. It's like a little cigar case, yeah. And the neat thing is when you unscrew that to get your pen out, this becomes a stand. So you can put this on your desk and you can stand up your pen like so. And on the other end, we have the nibs and the nib puller. So you unscrew that and then center hole is really a nib puller. And you get eight extra nibs in here. They're identical. They're not different styles of tips like you would see with Wacom or something like that. Oh well, for the price, that's fair. Speaking of the price, the list price is $4.99. You get it for about $450 on Amazon. In the description below has a link to it if you're interested in buying it. So in addition to the two pens that you get in the box and the two USB charging cables for the pens, obviously you get the pen display, the stand, which is pre-attached. Hello, Wacom. Give us a stand in the box like all of these companies do. A power brick to plug it in. It's not a very big power brick. And you also get two USB cables. This is going to connect to your laptop using a USB cable, and that's what reports where the pen is on the screen, and the HDMI cable for the display signal. So two connections are required there. Uh, I don't know why there were two USB cables in the box, but good times because one of them happened to be not working very well. They also give you a Mac, they call it for the Mac, but it's going to work for PCs as well, but a mini display port to HDMI connector in case you have a display port, mini display port on your laptop and you don't have an HDMI. This is 1920 by 1080, so you really don't need to go to anything beyond HDMI for in terms of resolution support or refresh or anything like that. They claim 178 degrees of viewing angles, which would be IPS-like, and yes, you, you can, but I do notice some color shifts, so for color critical work and your contrast perception, I suggest staying pretty much in front of it. But in something that is this, relatively speaking, small, you probably are going to be pretty much in front of it and on top of it when you're drawing. The, the stand on this thing is really sturdy, and it has a good range. It goes 15 degrees to 85 degrees, so that means almost flat on the desk, which is nice to almost upright, which is how I like to use it, almost like a canvas on a, well, an easel, that sort of thing. So anywhere in between is also good, and again, it's sturdy, it's firm, it gets the job done. Like all these others, there's a little lever on the back, you yank it, pull it up, and then you can adjust the height of it. And it has non-skid rubber legs on the back, so it's not going to go walking away when you lean on it, so to speak. It has eight express key style keys, a little quickie keys that are on the side of the display here, much like a Wacom Cintiq would. A lot of these are now doing that. I like those just fine. What do you want? Short Shortcuts for switching brushes or brush size or undo or anything like that. You've got them there. And yes, I'm left-handed, so I'm thinking I want those express keys on the other side. And you can actually flip this and use the, the monitor upside down if you wish to do that. So how is it for drawing? And how is the display quality in terms of how a display is? Well, the color metrics, the white point was all over the place. Uh, there are on-screen controls here, like much like there would be a regular desktop monitor to control brightness and contrast, and separately backlighting levels. You can choose a high dynamic high contrast level, which actually didn't seem to do anything. Hmm. Uh, so the contrast, they claim a thousand to one. I'm not seeing that, and I've tested with a couple of different laptops, so sometimes it can vary, believe it or not. I, I'm seeing about 500 to 1, and though the color gamut is wide on this, the color calibration is atrocious on it. So you're going to want to use a color rimmer or eyeball to your own taste to try to get that right. The white point is kind of high on it. The gamma is pretty decent on it. So I, again, you know, it's a lot less than a Wacom Cintiq, and that's where you're going to see something a lot better and a lot more gorgeous straight out of the box, but you're going to be paying for it too. So with this one, it's going to take more tweaking. The drivers were pretty reliable. It works again fine on Mac, tested that. And on Windows, the first thing I tested on it was a Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon, keeping it simple, not using it as something that itself is pen enabled so there won't be driver conflicts. And it didn't want to work at all. Everything was just wacky. So I switched over to this LG Gram and everything was good. So go figure. It's possible you could run into a driver conflict, but again, they update their drivers pretty frequently, so that should take care of that. In terms of actually drawing with it, it's a pleasure. Like I said, other than the parallax, if you're used to parallax, because older Wacom Cintiqs had that, a lot of older Wacom EMR technologies did that professionals use. Other than the parallax, it's 
lovely to draw on. It really is. I just love the responsiveness of the pen. It's, it's good stuff. I tested it in Photoshop, Clip Studio Paint, Art Rage, several programs all work nicely. There is no pen tilt here though. Again, that's something that you're going to have to pay more for and look into something like a Cintiq or some of the recent tablet PCs that we review, two-in-one tablet PCs that have tilt support, which is still very few, mostly just Samsung Notebook 9 Pro kind of products and Notebook 9 Pen products. And yeah, it's something to draw on. This is great. If you want to get into drawing, you don't want to replace your entire computer, it's nice. And lastly, like many of these pen displays, you get an art glove. This is not a touch screen. This is pen only. So it's not that you have to avoid accidental touches, but the idea here is so you don't smear it up. And I know a lot of you make fun of my poverty gloves that I wear. I take old gloves and I cut the fingers off. So, hey, you don't have to do that this way. This way your hand will just glide across and not leave grease anywhere. And good times. So that's the XP Pen Artist 16 Pro. Again, it's the higher color gamut version of their Artist 16. So for those of you who want more color saturation, a wider color gamut, this is the one for you. Otherwise, you could consider their regular Artist 16 model. And yes, indeed, they're, they're not kidding. It really does have close to that 92% acclaimed Adobe color gamut. However, the color calibration out of the box is terrible, so you're going to want to use a colorimeter. This is not a Wacom Cintiq, which obviously would cost you about three times as much or so, two to three times as much for the latest generation in this size. If you want to get something that is better calibrated out of the box, it's going to cost you, so there you have that. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, including tech for artists, and thumbs up if you like this vid.